viewers and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic. Well, it is October and you know what that means. It's Halloween, Halloween, everybody! Let us scream, hooray, it's Halloween! Okay, I might be jumping the gun a bit. We have a few more weeks before it's really Halloween, but can't blame me for getting super excited. As some of you may know, October is Pride Month. Let your freak flag wave. Let your freak flag fly. Never take it down, never take it down. Raise it way up high. So that's kind of exciting too. And a little bit of history on Pride Month in North America specifically. October was designated as the official Pride Month because October 11th, which is tomorrow, is National Coming Out Day. Yay! So in honor of that day, governments in North America decided that October would be LGBTQ plus history and awareness and celebration month. Yay! And I've never actually, like, officially come out I have very mixed feelings on the idea itself of coming out. And my ability to even have issues with the idea of coming out comes straight through the prism of my privilege of being white, middle class, and female bodied. But I guess because I have a vlog and I've spoken to these issues before, and because tomorrow is National Coming Out Day, I guess I'll come out? I mean, it's all fairly obvious. Uh, I'm single. I've been single for a really long time. I am actively not looking for partners. And I've always found myself attracted to both male and female individuals. Um, I don't want to restrict myself by saying men and women because I have been attracted to other non-binary individuals and trans individuals and for me it's less about the gender and more about the the attitude and the personalities and the intellect of the other person in fact i think the most important factor for me is the sense of humor if someone has a really good sense of humor and can make me laugh like i'm gone i'm instantly attracted to that person it's ridiculous I've always known that about myself, that I was attracted, not entirely equally, but I did find myself being attracted to both male and females, and I always knew that I had to trust that person first before I felt any sort of attraction. I had to know them kind of as a friend first. And so this comes into play with this earring, which is purple at the bottom and then works its way through white, gray, and black. This is the flag for um, asexualism. There are a lot of identities that fall within that flag, anywhere from people who do not experience any sexual attraction whatsoever to people who experience sexual attraction but have no inclination for a romantic relationship. And those people are aromantics as opposed to asexuals. And there's a whole spectrum in between. I find myself in the demi-sexual category, where again, I need to have that relationship before I feel any sort of physical attraction to another person. Also, in more recent years, have discovered about myself that I don't identify as fully female. Obviously, I have a female body. I have never felt completely comfortable within that label. I mean, as a female body person, I've been conditioned to enjoy female things, female things. It's, it gets really messy and complicated. Long story short, I have in recent years started to identify as non-binary, being that even though I have a female body, I do not identify as either female or male, but as somewhere in between. And I have characteristics from both male and female, and they sort of blend together, and that is who I am. 
Um, I have absolutely no desire to have children. Um, I'd love to adopt one day, possibly, if my economic circumstances would allow for that, but who knows? And thinking about it, I wouldn't ever want to transition because, again, even though having a male body would give me a lot more privileges um, than having this female body, it wouldn't be 100% who I am either because, like I said, I've been conditioned to enjoy fe female pursuits and I wouldn't want to have the double standard of being of presenting as male and then enjoying something that is labeled female and then have to deal with that backlash from society as well. So, I mean, for me, it's just easier this way and to just live my life and enjoy the things I enjoy and not have to explain why I enjoy them or like justify myself to other people. So long story short, that's where this earring comes in. Um, so this one you can see is green on the bottom and it goes up through white, gray, and black and that is the gender fluid flag. It's not the trans flag, which is a different series of colors, but this one is for anyone who doesn't identify as either male or female or trans, but rather people who are non-binary or gender fluid. So yeah, that is my story. I wanted to explain all of that to you. And now you know. <laughs> Yay! And moving on from that, I wanted to use this vlog not so much for my personal story, but to raise awareness and maybe generate some discussion and hopefully some funding for some events that are happening here in South Korea this month. On October 26th, Gwangju is going to hold its second annual Queer Culture Festival. It is really cool. I went to the first one last year and I had such a great time. I'm really sad that I won't be able to attend this year because I already have an event happening that weekend. But there are some expats in and around Gwangju who are going to be holding the first ever Pride Night at Tequila's, which is a bar in Gwangju, and they will be fundraising for a foreigner booth at the Gwangju Queer Culture Festival. If you live in or around Gwangju and Jeollanamdo and you're not doing anything, they will be hosting the first ever Pride Night at Tequila's this Saturday on October 12th. Again, unfortunately, I'll be out of town, so I can't be there personally, but I have already donated some money. Uh, if you would also like to send a bank transfer, then you can find the event on Facebook and get in touch with the organizers and get the information for a bank transfer from them. That would be great. But if you can go in person, I think that would be so awesome. I really hope that a lot of people show up and that it's a great night and that it's something that can occur annually, if not maybe two or three times a year. That would be so amazing. And one last thing, so in South Korea, there is a queer youth shelter. It's called Ding Dong, and it is a crisis center for LGBTQIA youth. Unfortunately, they don't have enough money to run 24-7, so it's only open, I think, from Tuesdays to Saturdays and it's not open overnight, so I don't think that youth can live there. I think it's more of a drop by when you need someone to talk to. And I really think that this is a wonderful initiative. I will be sending some money to their bank account later this month. I will put the website down below and you can go there to the English section and they have a bank account for within Korean bank transfers and you can also transfer from overseas using a foreign credit card if you would choose to do so. Um, I think it would be really great. They're the only center that I know of in Korea offering these services. But if you don't live in South Korea or you don't want to donate to something overseas, then it would be really cool if you could find uh, a local organization that supported LGBTQIA youth 
and just gave a small donation there because it's Pride Month and it's also my birthday coming up and I think that would be a really great birthday gift. But of course, you don't need to do anything. But I feel like I've been talking about this for quite a long time, so I should really wrap it up. So enjoy October, enjoy this fabulous fall weather, happy Pride Month, can't wait for Halloween, and until next time, stay just short of fantastic.